I just want to say something before we start, which is about uh, yesterday I I had the feeling that you all thought I was trying to have the people to start to fight with each other. <laughs> but uh, uh, that's not what I'm trying to do. Uh, when I'm, when, when the, the goal here is to try to um, keep the conversation specific so that um, the differences come out clear by itself because there are differences and that's what is it's very interesting it's very rich so um, uh, that's what I, that's what I try to do I try to sort of clarify what are the differences about some specific concept and on the other hand I try to stimulate somehow to reflect on also the consequences of using some certain words or, or sort of uh, having a specific idea of theater or, you know, so what are the consequences of what we do, you know? So I also ask questions that not necessarily we know the answer. So this is really a moment of, in a way it's a moment of a private conversation <laughs> where we think and, 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 and where we maybe find, discover also new things about what we do and why we do it. So that's like, that's the goal. Uh, because I think it's come a time where uh, there's a lot of uh, practice and the, uh, all these practical schools are trying to elevate themselves to university level. But uh, we need to start to really take responsibility about the consequences of our practice and what does this mean also from a theoretical point of view. I know it's, it's felt there's a strong resistance for this, but I really believe it's important. So, and that's why we do this panel, okay? So I don't want to make you fight. I just want to, I just want to un understand what you, what you honestly think about uh, stuff. So, I'd like to, to start from something very simple, which is the concept of action. Which, uh, and I'd like to hear briefly, uh, starting from Bill actually, what do you mean with action? What is an action for you if you use the word? And um, yeah, so very specific about this. Um, hmm. Well, action in, in Meisner's work is <laughs> everything. Um, you know, if we. Uh, we say that the uh, overall goal of the actor, the job of the actor, ultimately is to create behavior, that hopefully meaningful behavior, vivid behavior, but the goal is to create behavior. And what uh, creates human behavior is human action. Uh, from the time you're born until the moment that you die, every human being in this wor world is doing something. And uh, so we, we uh, take that, really, the, you could say the actor's job is to translate these words that are on the, on the, on the, on the page into, uh, into, into action. And that uh, acting is not about feeling emotion, it's about doing, performing uh, actions. And uh, they're not just physical, it, uh, uh, there are such things as there are really three categories of act, action that we deal with. <clears throat> One is uh, inner action. Uh, those are actions that take place within the character, within the actor, whether he's, uh, uh, oh, there's a scene in uh, Goodfellows where uh, uh, De Niro is in a, this bar and uh, somebody comes in and tells him uh, uh, something that somebody did and wants to know whether he should be killed or not. And uh, the guy leaves and, and De Niro sits there at the bar and he's just trying to decide, <laughs> you know? He's doing nothing, but, but because the, 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 uh, behavior, the action is so specific, it's very clear what's going, what's going on. And then he decides and he gets up and, and leaves. That's an example of an inner action, uh, trying to buck yourself up or give yourself a talking to, or things like that. Um, the, the, uh, another category of, uh, of, of action are uh, 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 interactions. And that's the bulk, really, of uh, what most plays are made up uh, out, out of. 
Uh, those are the things that take place between between people, between the between the characters. To scold somebody, or to uh, uh, take a stand for yourself, or to flirt with somebody. Uh, that uh, uh, that that that's a vast area of uh, of, uh, of of actions, and that a part is built up out of uh, these actions and understanding the emotional point of view of the of the character all the time. Um, so if you're going to play Hamlet, let's say, uh, if you if you think of the the the, the, the character and the, and the part, it usually starts out here someplace. You know, once in a while, uh, it starts right here. I mean, immediately the actor picks it up. He recognizes everything and knows exactly what to do from beginning to end. Well, then, kiss. Uh, 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 thank God that that happened and, and, and you're on your way. You don't need any kind of technical work whatsoever. But uh, uh, if you're gonna play Hamlet, the moment you start to do the things that Hamlet does, I mean, Hamlet does a lot of things in that play. You know, he agonizes over uh, uh, the death of his uh, father. He uh, uh, puts on a play, he breaks up with his girlfriend. He pretends to be crazy. The moment the actor begins to do those things, he begins to become Hamlet. And the other part of it is understanding what everything means uh, 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 to Hamlet. What it, what it means to him that his father is dead, what it means to him that his mother married so soon, you know? What his mother means to him, um, uh, which is uh, not uh, mother and son, but it's, it's, it's your lover, yeah. yeah. Uh, those action, uh, those action must be Active verbs, yeah. and why? Yeah, they have to be. They have to be active verbs because it's something that you have to do. Right? So if you want to know, you know, they have now. I don't know if they have it here, but in New York, somebody published this uh, dictionary of actions, and it has like ten thousand different actions, ten thousand active verbs listed there, and it's really uh, almost useless because ninety percent of those words are inactable. You know, the, the many uh, active verbs cannot be acted because they're too general, or they really are objectives. Uh, if you want to uh, persuade somebody of something, then uh, 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 the immediate question is, how are you going to go, go about doing that? You know, you can't act to persuade. But uh, uh, you can, uh, uh, let's say that, uh, uh, he's very confident. Let's say that uh, <laughs> I, want to get, I want to get Leonard to give up, to give up acting, uh, to persuade him to give up acting. Uh, well, one thing that I might do is <laughs> wants to be an actor. <laughs> That's one way. <laughs> the other way is, for God's sake, don't you understand how good actors don't make any money? They starve to death. The whole membership of Actors' Equity in the United States is an enormous country, and they average like $500 a year in income from acting? What do you have your mind? <laughs> 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 That's a physical action. That's the third category. <laughs> it's physical actions. A lot of stage business are physical actions, you know, sweeping the floor, uh, uh, looking for something. Those are, those are physical accidents, just uh, putting on your makeup, let's say, things like that. A lot of stage business are physical actions. But uh, the thing about it is, you see, is that this, these actions, once you understand them, they are universal. Every mother in the world knows how to sing a lullaby, put her uh, baby to sleep at night, you know? It doesn't matter what nationality they are, doesn't matter what, what year it's going on. The Chinese mothers do it, African mothers do it. So they know, once it's identified, they know just how to do it, and the audience will recognize it because they've done it too. You know? And it's the thing that also unlocks really classical text, uh, the, the restoration. You still have uh, uh, jealous husbands cross-examining their wives. Can, you know? can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, just to... So is this action, for example, now when you were talking to, uh, to Leonard, you changed the content of the line. When you, you changed the content 
of the line. First he said, I ah, wants to be an actor, then he said, for God's sake, you know, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm saying I have an intention. Yeah, but uh, that's, uh, that's my, just, wait, 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 no, just let me finish the question. So, uh, is, this, uh, is this action related to the content, or is it is some, is an intention you put, you add to a, to, uh, to a content? Do you understand the question? You're talking about con content, you're talking about the text? Yeah, I'm talking about the text. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the text is this kind of shorthand. Uh, 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 the, the, the writer imagines everything in his imagination, but all he writes down is what the people say to each other, usually, usually you know? And so, the, the, but a trained actor looks at that text and he sees possibilities for, for uh, action. You know? if, you, if you're doing Hamlet, he's doing to be or not to be. What is he do? What are you doing? <laughs> You know, it's a, con a con contemplating uh, suicide, uh, and, and that's something that you can that you can do. They're always simple, they're concrete, and they're doable, and uh, that's a very uh, helpful thing. The other the other part of it, of course, is what everything means to him, and that's where you get into the to the why uh, and the how. I have another question that we go forward, which is, uh, for example, to persuade. How do you know if you're really persuading or if you are showing that you're persuading? Well, we spend a year uh, uh, grounding people in the reality of doing. So you know, you know, you know the difference. You know whether you're uh, really looking for your car keys or you're just looking for them in a kind of half-assed way. They can discern that. A, a talented actor can discern that for themselves whether well, they're really doing it or not really but doing it. I know, I but I was really making fun of him. Yes, how do you know I, I, you're really making fun of him? Because I understand that doing, I understand that action. I've done that, seen other people do it. Uh, uh, and I'm also getting a reading back from him. I understand whether I'm succeeding or not succeeding. That's what I wanted to get. Yeah, we spent, we spent, we spent an uh, enormous uh, amount of time sensitizing the actor, you know. Thank you. Uh, uh, in which we're part of that work. So can you say, can you say that... Sense of truth. Can you say that to the action, there's a reaction or a feedback? Yeah, you'll get something back, always. And that's what you're... Well, you know... What you used to play, or...? We spend a lot of time uh, sensitizing the actor and uh, teaching the actor to read behavior all the time. Because you can't make someone alive unless they have that kind of uh, sensibility. Uh, uh, that's a that's a very important thing. If somebody insults you and you didn't notice, <laughs> it's not going to do anything to you. Do you know what I mean? So they're Meisner trained actors if they're well trained by somebody who knows what they're doing and understands his work. Um, uh, it, it's a I forget where I was going with this. <laughs> oh, sensi sensitive to behavior. Very, uh, 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 very good at reading behavior all the time, and very responsive to it. Okay, okay. thank and you. And that's where that's where the subtext comes in. You're not playing the text. It's not what the person literally is saying. It's what they're really saying. But if you don't really hear them. Yeah. What's, what's it going to do to you? Great, that's clear. Okay, thank you. Um, so, mm, Ed, I want to hear Ed about the action, and then uh, Michelle, and then finish with, with Leonard, Carmelara. <clears throat> this is about the action. It's about the action. Right. Well, he said pretty much everything I was going to say about it. <laughs> so you agree? The acting is doing, the acting is behavior. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, it's conditioned uh, by a number of things. Uh, whatever the scene, what, what, what was the scene just before the scene that takes place? What, what are the given circumstances that, that uh, uh, the conditions, the behavior of the person in a particular, in a particular scene? For example, we're working on one scene in one of the classes, uh, in, in, in our class, coming up, uh, uh, the, the death of salesman, you know, the, the, the two brothers uh, in their room. Uh, 
the, the scene is conditioned by Biff, the one character, his whole relationship with his father, right? His relationship with his father is very specific. You know, whatever uh, choice this actor used to create that reality is going to condition his behavior in this particular scene with his brother. So the scene begins with uh, Biff listening to the old man, Willie Loman, downstairs going mad, in effect, right? So I said, all right, we want to get the sense of you listening. So just come to the door, the place we have placed at the door, and listen. Listen to what, you know? He's great. It's a, that listening is a form of behavior, whether you like it or not. It is a form of behavior, and it's an important moment in the play. So he says, how am I going to do that? I said, well, you're in front of an audience. Listen to the audience. You hear people outside. In the, outside of the uh, area, outside of the audience. So now you're... you're, you're and you're listening, actually listening to those sounds right there, you know? Or you hear the actor saying these things off stage. You listen to that. And you react to those different things based on your condition prior to the scene. Prior to the but is the, is the word action a key word in Strasbourg or is not so many, so many, so you Well, use, when you, uh, behavior is what primarily we use. Uh, you know, action is it's conditioned by a number of different things. Uh, what your objective is when you come into a scene, mm -hmm. right? I, wanna, I want to, uh, I want to make love with this woman, and she doesn't want to make love to me, but I, and I know that, and I've got to do something. I've got to use one strategy or another strategy to seduce her, <laughs> right? So uh, depending upon what has happened before in my relationship with this character that I'm playing will condition how, what strategies I use. I try this, I try that. I try wine, I try giving her a gift. I do a number of different things that are actions that, uh, that are my, uh, what, uh, fulfill my objective. Different number of strategies that you may try. It's a basic kind of action, an act, active exercise that we do, you know. In but in the Strasbourg technique, is the inner life created as a consequence of the action, or is the inner life independent from the action? No, no, it's part of the action. It comes, it, it is directly related to the action. Right? Mm -hmm. And the inner, how does the inner life create it? Well, God, in, in any number of ways it's created. It depends up, uh, upon what the uh, given circumstances of the text is, you know? So then the Strasbourg preparation is a way to be more open and more vulnerable to the behavior and the circumstances, or is a way to add something to the circumstances? Both. It's both of those things, and any number of things. It's wide open, mm -hmm. you know? Depends, depending upon so many conditions that lead up to that moment, you know? Yeah, okay. So, Thank you. Thanks. Good. Um, do you have your mic? Can, can I hear uh, Michelle? Uh, Michael Keller. Uh, what does it mean, action? Kurz. <laughs> does it mean action in, in the... Handlung ist einer der wichtigsten Begriffe in der Schauspielkunst. Yeah, so um, action is one of the most important uh, words in this, our acting, in the Schauspielkunst. Um, art of acting. Art in the art of acting, yeah. Die Arbeit des Schauspielers besteht darin, Handlungen einer Rolle darzustellen. So the work of the actor is to, uh, to show um, actings in the, in, the, in the role. Das hilft ihm, seine Gefühle und Gedanken sichtbar zu machen. This helps him um, to make um, feelings and, and Gefühle and... Uh, uh, feelings and thoughts are visible. Handlungen beziehen sich in der Regel auf andere Menschen. So actions uh, are relating normally on other people, on a partner. Deswegen sind die Handlungen sozial. And that's why these actions are social. Okay. That's it? <laughs> that's clear. Uh, can I hear Hans? Yeah. <clears throat> well, I think everything is said, and I think more or less everyone agrees. Uh, so I can just add that uh, Tosunogo sort of 
because action is, is a word which is uh, easy to use and easy to misuse and you can use it in very many different ways and not misuse but just put other meanings into it. So he, uh, he, he made a formula just so that uh, we should not miss or understand each other anymore. Uh, so I can tell you that formula. <laughs> and this is very funny because it's, uh, it's, it, it's made out of so many different parameters and words from Stanislavski to Sonogo that uh, you have to explain it for, for some days. But I can tell you, action. I can do it in Norwegian and in Russian, and I try in English afterwards. I've never done it before. In Norwegian, it's uh, handling an enhetlig psykofysisk process for å nå et mål i kamp med omstendighetene i den lille sirkelen på en eller annen måte uttrykt i tid og rom. That's action. Or uh, i på russisk... Uh, <laughs> no, no, we'll try to translate it together. Okay. Well, I'll try to do it in English. Action is... Uh, uh, Pa parallel? What, einheitly? What do you say? Einheitly? Einheitlich. Einheitlich in, in, in English? <laughs> uh, uh, unified. What? Unified? unified. It's, uh, action is a unified psychophysical process to uh, uh, achieve. achieve a goal uh, in fight with the circumstances within the little circle. Uh, but somehow, and that's very important, somehow uh, justified <coughs> or realized. Yeah. realized in time and space. Yeah. Okay, this is a very interesting definition. <laughs> it's not mine. Uh, yeah, but it's it, it open to a lot of considerations. Um, um, can, can you explain to us a bit uh, better what it means? I think everything uh, is uh, very clear. And uh, sorry, sorry, can, can you explain to us a bit better what it means, uh, the lethal circle and... and, uh, and and the bigger circle? Well, you know, it's, uh, he used circles in two different uh, terms. It is about uh, uh, circumstances. Uh, and when you talk about circumstances, w which we do here, you have the, cir the small circle, which is the situation, the event you're in, just now, here, now, which is affecting you. The moment. Yeah, the moment, uh, this, this situation. What circumstances are, are, are affecting me now here, yeah. and then there you, ha you have the the, the 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 second circle, which is circumstances, which is in the uh, sort of uh, play or or the uh, performance, which which also affects you on stage here, but it it's in indirect. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. And then you have the big circle, which is the political state uh, you are in, in, in the, the time, uh, the, the situation of, of your uh, of, uh, well, big, big political situation or time situation, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the given circumstances in Tostonogo and the way you work are uh, actually uh, deconstructed into three. Three it's elements. Not, it's not Tostanogo that that made. Uh, it's what was made of Stanislavski. These three circles, but he was just trying to make it very clear. What is what does he mean about action? Yeah. The, and what for me is quite interesting in this formula is not all this uh, uh, one. Uh, what is it? Uh, unified psych psychological, physiological, physiological process to 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 reach a goal that everyone agrees on. But I think the most important thing is the, the last uh, part of the sentence, which says somehow it is um, connected, not somehow uh, expressed. realized or right. expressed in time and space. This somehow expressed in time and space gives them the, the openness to, to improvisation. And that should always be there. It's not fixed. It's not, uh, so, uh, it's not once and for all. It's somehow, and you have to find it. But Every can, time. can I tell you something? Because there is the uh, often uh, I have the impression sometimes in bad uh, executions that uh, you can totally feel uh, that those changes of actions are preconceived, predecided, and predetermined in a way that they don't have a potential, they don't have an unpredictability, they don't have the 
they don't have this improvisatoric uh, thing. So how can you investigate these actions, but at the same time leave the space for this impro improvisation, this being in the moment? Well, I, I think they just made examples here just before me that there is different uh, uh, strategies strategy, strategy, strategy to, to, to get to the goal and, and if you fix the strategies once and for all, uh, you get a different uh, you find them in the improvisation, in the process to, 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 to make the, your uh, behavior, but if you fix it, uh, then one, the one very, very important quality disappears. The quality of improvisation, the quality of life, which is going on just now here in front of you. So that's the only difference, the, the different sort of uh, strategies. Uh, you find through improvisation and at that time when you improvise it's quite uh, fresh and uh, well it on, on the, has this quality of... Can you keep them fresh through every night, every performance? That's, that's a hard thing but yes of course you can train that and you, that's, uh, that's... That's the goal of the training? That, that's the goal, that's uh, one of the goals, yes. And uh, do you I ever... Want, want yeah. to add one thing about this why? which is interesting to, to get them to find out about the role and the, the action. In, keep, Russia, keep, keep the in, in, in Russia, in Russian, uh, and in Stanislavski uh, uh, writings, he doesn't use that much the, the, uh, the word why. There is a very special word in Russian which is sachem. It's one word and it, it is not why, it is for what. Uh, so th this is one word and they use it all the time in, in Russian uh, everyday language. They don't ask why did I do that, they, they ask you what, for what did you do that. Uh, so this, uh, this is a translation problem because in, when you, you translate this word sachem, you translate very often in, in why. It's, you, it, it means why in a way too, but it's not why, it's for what. But it's strange to say for what in our language. But for what includes for what purpose? For yeah. okay. Sachem, the deal. Why? For what? What did you want with that? What was your purpose? What was your? Uh, so it's not why from there, but it's why from there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can, can I can I ask you something also about the, related to the action? Uh, there is also. Do you ever use the word counteraction? No. I uh, because I've. Uh, I, I know of a lot of uh, people that work with active analysis that when they break down the text, they find the actions and the counteractions. Is that something you exist in your work? No. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, I think at this point you should yeah, just keep it there. We can. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you make a very interesting point about keeping a performance fresh which uh, uh, is a big thing for the actor because you can't really be a professional actor without <coughs> being able to repeat behavior. You have to find it and then be able to do it over and over again, performance after performance, take after take. You know? But the thing that uh, you, you take it away from the text to find the action, as I was doing there with, I was improvising uh, uh, with Leonard, um, then you practice it <laughs> until you, it feels right. You know that you're really doing it, right? And you know why you're doing it. Then when you come into performance, that's where the actor's awareness and sensitivity comes into place. Because the other actor is always different. It, the, the difference may be very minute, but he's always different. He's a day older every time you come to the performance. And so how you catch the impulse off the other actor is always going to be a little different. But you've got to be very sensitized and aware. I think this is what you call also with improvisatoris. Uh, uh, the improvisational sort of uh, ability. Um, yes, uh, we, we hear Carmen Lara and then we finish with Leonard and I think we stay with the action for today because it was a very short time, we have to go uh, forward and tomorrow I want to talk more about the character and, and everything related to this. But I think it's good that we've clarified this concept of action. It's a very important concept. Uh, do you have a microphone somewhere? <coughs> yeah, yeah, she does. Uh, yeah, I think uh, 
My biggest inspiration uh, when thinking about action is the philosopher Hannah Arendt, uh, who talked about action only being possible in relation. And for us, I think those who are interested in experimental forms and researching what is an actor, what is an action, what's interesting for us is failure and what happens inside failure, and the possibilities of failure, the new cultural knowledge in failure. And what Hannah Arendt offers us uh, in thinking about action is that action is only possible because of two things, promising and forgiveness. And so when I think about action in relation, I'm thinking about an ethical space and the call to perform, so the demand of the space, which says, how should I act here? Who should I be here? What is the demand? And I'm only willing to take the risk to improvise my being, my way of being, whether it's inside a text and how I relate physically, or in the work we're interested in, it's in actually devising processes. Uh, uh, can I just finish yeah. my thought? Um, that we only take the risk because we trust the space, which we've agreed upon, is a space where we can be forgiven from failure, and also where we promise to, to give something. And whether that's a radiant body, or whether we're actually promising simply to keep acting, not to give up, but just to repeat the task, and not to leave, or sort of to turn our face from the other and stop relating. Uh, then from that place, something can happen. And what's important there isn't so much how I represent reality, but how I question representation. So I'm asking, what does it mean to be a woman? What does it mean to love? What does it mean to feel desire? These are the questions I'm bringing to the space. And they, those are often- How do you give action to these questions? How do you give action to the yeah. questions? It has partly to do with games and chance and different tasks. So we set up very structured situations where how we should behave and how we should feel are not scripted. And we are finding those things out. And it's quite challenging, actually, in the beginning, because until you create a dynamic with an ensemble, people are still sort of figuring out, what are the rules of this group? Who, who can I be here? And that's part of the dynamic of listening and figuring out what kind of agent I am socially. So the research isn't just about how to, again, how to represent something artfully, but it's about how to be in a social space. Because what we want to bring in the theater is also questions about how we should be in public space, how we should deal with history, how we should deal with ideas like heroism. So we're questioning these things philosophically through the process. So you had, I'm sorry, I just didn't want to lose my thought there, but you had a, a response. No, I was, I was, I was, wanted to ask you if, if, if you ever use the word interaction? Or, interaction. Mm, or you only use the word action, or you, neither of them? We use the word relation, relation. quite a bit. And, and responsiveness. Or responsiveness. Yeah. So action is not really a key word. Yeah, action is very key word. Okay. And actually I would divide action into three things very practically. Experiments, right? actions that we do to find out what will happen. And we may say, oh my god, that was a huge, that was not interesting, or let's try something else. Uh, and that's a kind of research that we're willing to surrender to and be and find out that we're really embarrassed sometimes about the choices we've made and just think, oh my God, where did that come from? But we go there. Uh, and then, then we have composed actions where we say, well, from what we've learned, let's try these things in a certain order, in a certain proximity in space and see how they work and begin to set them. And then we have repeated actions. So then we begin to say, what if I do this over and over again? This one, this, this event that I've researched, this wave, uh, let's say it's a slow motion walk. How, what happens if I repeat this in 17 different spaces across the city? Uh, what's the goal of repeating this? Uh, it, it's like to, to sort of uh, go behind the me mechanical aspect of the action and find a sort of uh, um, archetype truth? No. Or it's, what, is, what is the goal there? The goal is, uh, first, in actor training, it's about the senses. So it's about awakening the senses and actually, when I say withdrawal of technique, in many ways it's about unscripting the perceptions of how we should move in space or how we should read a space, and particularly how we should interpret each other. Hmm. So if I decide, sort of very objectively, to take a slow motion walk, it's partly to change, very, uh, in very practical terms, the way I see, the way I move, the way I breathe, and the rhythm of, of my perception. And in doing that, I'm open to other ways of receiving uh, social interaction. 
So it's about that invitation to what might happen. And that's partly what's maybe a little more scary or more open to failure, is if this is part of a devising process of coming up with material, I'm always asking this question, what happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? In terms of consequences or? Yes, in terms of consequences, in terms of the different identities that I find that I might also realize are useless and throw away, uh, in terms of the narratives and stories that I might want to steal or borrow or translate, so that the material that I'm going to eventually share with an audience comes from the research and not from a predetermined outcome. Is there an action you do with the audience? Or the actions are only between actors? Oh no, the actions could very well be between the audience uh, and one actor. Does example. something change there or is, is, there, is there a difference or not? Uh, you mean, for example, is what happens between two actors different be between what happens If I'm doing an action audience? with you in the space and there's nobody or if I'm doing this action with yes, you in this I'm space and there's somebody or if I'm doing an action in this space yeah. with them. If I engage an audience member in an action, uh, then I'm in some ways relying on this, an even bigger uh, risk of promising a forgiveness, the possibility of failure, because I might in some ways uh, reach an ethical space with an audience member. I might ask something from them they're not willing to give, and I might find out I get nothing in return, or I might get something I wasn't expecting. Yeah, great. Okay, Leonard, and then uh, we, we, we close. Uh, Action, and then I also want to ask you something about energy. That we can you start with action? Action. Action uh, also in relationship to energy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, action is. Uh, I mean, actually, I, I learned action from this man here uh, when I was a student. <laughs> so uh, my understanding of it is coming basically from exactly what he said, which is in agreement with, as as Hans said, with what Ed and what uh, Ed said. It's the same thing, but uh, for me, it's okay if it's this action is to persuade. Then the next question is, how does one persuade, right? Which Bill said in the same way. And uh, for, for, for me, I, I teach people and, and myself to work this way where to talk about it briefly and to use your hands as you speak about, about this persuasion. And you may find that you're, well, when I persuade somebody, I'm trying to, you know, and you say, ah, look what I'm doing here. I'm making this gesture of pulling them into my sphere of influence, basically, is what I'm trying to do when I persuade. So I find the gesture. We look for the psychological gesture of, uh, of this thing to persuade so that it energetically wakes up in the actor these streams of persuasion, these streams of pulling the other person into my sphere of influence. The other person or the other person's energetic body? <laughs> Uh, well, you know, both, I suppose. I mean, if I'm pulling them, I'm pulling their energetic body with, 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 with them, yeah? And um, the, the curious thing, I mean, you want to talk about energy again, but the curious thing about energy is that uh, if I'm using my energetic body to do anything, the audience also has an energetic body, and my partner has an energetic body. And when I move my energetic body in a particular way, I am moving the audience's energetic body in a particular way. And so, the, the, so the, as I said about the art, they leave the performance and they say, well, I was really moved. But what do they say? What do they really mean by they say that? Something within them was moved and it was their energetic body that was moved and they followed that. We follow it in life all the time. We just don't know we're doing it. Can I ask you something? Is energetic body related to temporitme? Temporitum? Because in studies last they talk about uh, variations of temporitum. Uh, it, it seems to me that in a way, when you, when you do a psychological gesture with an ener energetic body and then you're doing something else with your physical body outside, in a way there is a variation of some sort of yeah, temporal rhythm. We certainly uh, it can influence the, the, the temporal rhythm by, by the um, movement of the, of the energetic body, yes. I mean, I just, yesterday in class, asked people to sneak around like children for a while. The room, big, big, big movements, like a cartoon of sneaking and then ask them to just walk and imagine that they were moving like that and, they, and, and, the, and the things that they spoke about were, was an effect on their temporal rhythm. A absolutely. I just want to close with this thing, uh, then we'll really close. You know, energy, and we'll talk later, when we go forward with the conference, we will talk about the problem of, of science, human science, and because there are information, uh, these techniques, have been created, they are very practical, and we use words, 
but then there is a parallel, there is a science which, which, which sort of uh, change our perception of these images. Uh, so we will talk in the future what if we have to take this into consideration, if it's not interesting, if, if it is, I don't know, I'm just, but I will raise this problem, which I think is very important, especially in Europe where we have academies that are trying to give a bachelor to actors and not just to teach them how to act well. Uh, so, or creating PhD or things like that. Um, Feldenkrais, Feldenkrais talks about energy Talks, he, he, he sort of laughs about people that, that talk, use the word energy in a way. So it is, it is, do you know Feldenkrais is? Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. So, uh, so and, he, and he says, imagine, he says, you know, okay, I think the only way I can explain energy is like this. If you, if you are at the end of your life and you put on one side a mountain, which is all the food and the things you've been drinking, it's a huge mountain. And then on the other side, you, there's another mount, mountain which is not as big, which is all the excrements and all the things you've been, you know, what? The excrements. The oh, excrements. Excrements. Yeah. Excrements. Sorry. It's not a word I, I say every day. <laughs> excrements. So imagine these two mountains. One would be the, the one with food. And, and drink would be much bigger than the other one. So the difference, he says, that's energy. So that it's the work you have done to transform. No, no, but this is, guys, we're talking about this. Is, this, this is a problem, it's a real problem. Uh, so the difference is, is the work you have done to transform this chemical, uh, material into this other chemical material. And from a scientific point of view, it's, it, it makes quite sense. So is this something that is like this energy you talk about is more like sort of a, an image, a focus, something that we, we should sort of use because it's immediate, because it makes us do something, or it's something like that exists, that it's for you, it's something that is there, that is, you believe in it. Well, as I said, it's, I mean, you just look at the difference between something that's living and something that's dead. I mean, the food could be called something that's living, and the shit could be called something that's dead. But I, would, I could so tell you that's, big difference between but I could tell, if I'm an atheistic, I could tell that something is, something is, that is dead, it's something that is not transforming, and it's something that is not doing the work. And that's the only difference I see. No, there's, there's I mean, the essential thing is that there's movement in the living thing and no movement in the dead thing. And even if the living thing is standing still, there's some Work perception is movement. of movement. Work is movement. Work. Yeah. Yeah, well, of course, that's an expense of energy. But what's the energy? I mean, it, I don't know. You, you know, we could go on and on about this. This is a, it's a very, when you, when you bring up energy in terms of a, as a practical thing to work with, there's always these kind of questions that come up. And, the, and but the fundamental question is, are you gonna use it or not? Can you say yes to it or not? And if you can say yes to it, it's yours to work with. And if you can't say yes to it, then it's not going to help you at all. But I, I, I mean, I follow you. I mean, I think it's very important to, 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 to use it, and I agree with you. But, but uh, I'm just telling you that if you, uh, there is a problem when, when we use these kind of words. And, 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 and it's only a problem when you start to talk about it. If you start to use it, you understand there's no problem here. It's really there. <laughs> can I hear Carmen Lyon? With my students, I'm laughing right now. Can I keep coming back? It's actually, uh, just to, to end, to put a point on the end of the debate here, to take it to a third thing, which is that a dead body is a lot going on. <laughs> it's a very active space, uh, and dead, dead things are actually extremely porous and have a lot of action going on in them and serve a lot of purpose in an ecosystem, whether it's a spiritual one or a natural, biological one. So uh, to, to again speak on behalf of failure, <laughs> the, the, the space of the dead uh, body, uh, and I'm just challenging this, also with language, I think it's important that there's something, for, for some of us, that's where we identify our practice. So, I'll just leave it there, but just to kind of throw in okay. the, yeah. the turns back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't know what you all are talking about. <laughs> I really don't. 
and I, and I can think of telling, saying these things to an actor, oh my God, you know, if he's a real actor, he's going to say, shut up. <laughs> he's, yeah, I mean, you know, Sandy Meisner would be revolving in his grave. He'd be rolling his eyes up in there. Sandy Meisner was a materialist. He was a materialist. A materialist. He was. <laughs> he was simple. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm sorry, Bill. I, I I understand your point of view, but you know there is a huge world of theater like uh, Grotowski, like uh, Peter Brook. There is Gurdjieff. There is a, such a need of spirituality. There is a room which is a room for other things, and there is a, a research. There is many workshops. There are people that are working with this all the time, and I think when you bring this kind of work into a place like this, which is financed by the state and it's uh, supposed to be a university, and we have problems because we have to write a plan of study and we have to inform about the concrete results of what we do. We have this problem. It's a very practical problem. And so I'm, I'm, I, I mean, I'm very fas fascinated by the Michael Chekhov work and everything. I think it's, it's great. I'm just asking you this question honestly. I'm, I don't know the answer, but I think it's a very interesting topic if we want to, if we want to also find uh, new ways to develop and, 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 and new ways because we are in the Western world and we are on the on a very sort of uh, full speed train to to lose any kind of uh, sense of of energy of spirituality or these kind of things and it's it's a problem. There is a need from, from, from the audience and there are many theatre groups, there are many theatre directors who are trying to answer to this need and those the the way they do it it's often hard to reproduce and I think it's a problem from a pedagogical point of view. So that's why we, we yeah. Also, ich glaube, Energie, das sehe ich auch als ein sehr komplizierter Begriff, wenn man ihn anwendet. Also. Yeah, energy is a very um, complicated and complex uh, word term. Yeah. Wir haben heute gesprochen über Partnerbeziehungen, über Beziehungen. Ich glaube, Energie. Wait, wait, wait. Today we talked about uh, the partner relationship. Yeah. Wenn Energie als Begriff benutzt wird, so if we use energy as a term, dann ist er ganz gut, ihn für Partnerbeziehungen, also für Beziehungen zu benutzen. It's good to use it always related to a partner in a relationship to the partner. Weil Beziehung ist ja äh, ein sehr dialektischer Prozess. Because um, uh, relationship is a dialectical process. Von Aktion und Reaktion. Action and reaction. Und ich kann nur so viel Energie aufbauen, so wie ich vom Partner, Partner bekomme. So I can only build up as much energy as I get from the partner. Wenn ich einen Hund trete, If I kick a dog, dann übertrage ich Energie. I give him some energy. Yeah. <lacht> has, has, yeah, trend, trend. Und die Energie wird in ihm so lange erhalten bleiben, wie stark ich getreten habe. And this energy will uh, rest inside the dog, depending on how strong I kicked. The dog, uh, the much energy yeah, I gave him. Some are more sensitive than the others, so I think it depends also. Also, the hunde sind manchmal sensibler als andere. Yes, okay, very good. Wenn ich einen Stein trete, so if I kick a stone, wird er so lange Energie haben, wie ich getreten habe, so lange wie er sich bewegt. He will also have as much energy as I kicked him, so as long he's moving. Es hat, es heißt also, es hat immer was mit meiner Energie zu tun, die ich übertrage auf einen Partner. So what he wants to say, it has always something to do with how much energy do I give the partner. Um, Und in der Schauspielerei äh, müssten wir wahrscheinlich darauf achten. So, yeah, in the acting, acting we have to, to look on. Dass diese Energie zurückkommt. That this energy comes back, that I give, this energy comes back. Okay. okay. Great. We have, we, please, it's really like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. But I'm coming from the and Seppa seminar, and I don't know all of you. No, so I have had very interesting, and it's beautiful to listen to you, but I don't know all the names we, and we, who you are. We, we had a great uh, program on the, on the internet, but I will, I will tell you. And, uh, okay, uh, we start there with Mr. Ad Sitrakian, head of the acting and playwrights unit at the Actor Studio, Lee Strasberg, kind of work-based thing. We have uh, Carmen Lara Eli, who is the head of uh, uh, the acting department at the Academy for Senekunst in Fredrikstad in Norway. And she's working with a technique called um, acting as artistic research. We have Leonard Petit from the Michael Chekhov Institute in New York, working with Michael Chekhov technique. We have Bill Asper from the Bill Asper Studio in New York, 
working with the Meissner technique. We have, we have Hans Henriksen, Professor Hans Henriksen from Kimstay Schule, from Kiel in, in, in Oslo, who is working with uh, Stanislavski and in specific with the tradition of Tostanogov. We have Harald Fuhrman and Michel Keller from Ernst Busch in Berlin, and they work with the Brechtian tradition. Thank you. Very You're welcome. Much. Have a good lunch.